I'm Tim Neubauer from Exceed Safety. Today's topic is ratio of workers to safety staffing personnel. I'm often asked, when do I need a full-time safety person? And how many safety people do I need per worker? Both are not easily answered. There are multiple factors that affect the need for safety professionals, either on the construction site or in a production facility. Some considerations include risk of tasking, size of the area to be considered, and if there are regulatory or contractual requirements. The Department of Defense has several uh, publications on safety staffing formulas that I have used to blend a formula that I recommend at the conclusion of this article. Starting with the facility method, <clears throat> you look at the facility. Is it wide open or filled with individual workstations or, or rooms? The more machinery or rooms that can impair a line of sight of the safety staff would trigger the need for more staffing. A second method is based on what functions are being performed. I will call this the function method. For simplicity, we will divide tasks into three risk categories, low, medium, and high risk functions. The amount of safety staffing is based on the amount of medium risk functions. Uh, I will use this as part of my conclusion at the end of this article. The third method is regulatory or contractually driven. From experience, contractually, I see requirements for staffing between 10 and 25 workers for each safety person. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, has no specific standard addressing a ratio of safety people to workers. On a related note, I see a trend in contractual requirements for safety staffing going beyond a dedicated safety person or an OSHA 10 certification. I see that this is a positive trend looking for morally, more highly qualified safety professionals on job sites. The next method is based on the current staffing level at an organization in comparison to other organizations. The Department of Defense uses the following formula. Divide the total number of workers by 1,000, then divide that number um, with the current number of safety staffing in place. Then compare that number to other similar facilities. The Air Force uses a, a formula as well. Their formula adds the total number of job sites uh, employees multiplied by 0 0.0013, and the contractor staffing is multiplied by 0 0.0014. You uh, add those two numbers up, and your result will be the number of safety staff you'll need. We're going to use the second factor um, in my conclusion as well. The last method I will review is one based on historical incidents. If the number of incidents is too high or trending upward, then the current safety staffing level may need to be increased. So getting back to, uh, uh, to what I said earlier, in my conclusion, I recommend using a combination of these methods. As an example, I modify the second methods formula as follows. Low risk task formula is a number of workers divided by a thousand equals the number of safety staff needed. For an example, 50 low risk workers require 0.5 of a safety staff or half of a, of a person. Uh, the next one would be medium risk task formula is the number of workers divided by 50, the number of safety staffing needed. Um, so the example is 50 medium risk workers would require one full-time safety staff member. High risk formula is the number of workers divided by 25, the number of safety staffing needed. Example, 20 high risk workers require 0.8 safety staffing. For the entire project, we would take the 0.5 from low risk, the full one for the medium risk and 0.8 for the high risk. And that equals 2.3 safety people, which is always rounded up. So we require three safety people for 70 workers on that site. That's just a, a quick example of my formula and how I calculate it. For more information, or if you have a need, please reach out to me directly. My name is Tim Neubauer and I'm from Exceed Safety.